Hello, everyone. Welcome to our panel session, Climate Change and Women's Wellbeing, which is a part of a fantastic global conference, Women Deliver 2023, taking place in Kigali, Rwanda. My name is Surayo Pulatava, Health and Climate Specialist, USAID Healthy Mother and Healthy Baby Activities, implemented by Apt Associates in Tajikistan. I'm truly honored to be here before today on this panel session dedicated to the critical topic of women's well being and climate change. First, I would like to express my gratitude to each and every one of you for joining us here today. Your attendance signifies your commitment to protect the because of women's well being and addressing the challenges posed by climate change. I hope that all participants will find it to be a valuable opportunity to share their experience. You can share your unique perspective. Please feel free to write question or comment in the chat. If you have questions that need more detailed information uh, or you would like to discuss a particular approach or solution, you can leave your contact information and we can continue our conversation via email. At the end, we will share all speaker contacts. And now I would like uh, to present how the USAID Healthy Mother, Healthy Baby HMHB activity and local health system strengthening project response to climate change and well being. Uh, of uh, women in Tajikistan. Yeah, Tajikistan is one of the most climate vulnerable countries in the European and Central Asia region and has relatively low adaptive capacity. The country is particularly vulnerable to climate change given it depends on agriculture and hydropower exposure to drought and head stress and significant risk of floods and mudslides. All this has its caused threats to the health and well-being of the Tajik people, exacerbating vulnerabilities and disproportionately affecting women, children, poor communities, displaced peoples, and those with disability or underlying health conditions. Next slide, please. Population of Tajikistan, approximately 10 million people, are steadily urbanizing, but 73% of population still lives in rural villages. Tajikistan rapidly growing population engages in traditional agriculture for food and grows cotton in irrigated fields. Deforestation, soil erosion, and our grazing increase the risk of climate change impacts. Next slide, please. The impact of climate change are not gender neutral. Women are particularly vulnerable to climate change related hazards. Climate change impact on women, women's health, livelihoods, and well being. Next slide, please. In Tajikistan, women have a vital role to play in adapting to and mitigating the effect of climate change. Due to gender inequality and traditional gender roles, women often have less access than men to the resources needed to cope with the impact of climate change. Male migration resulting from lack of employment, low salaries has shifted work responsibilities within the family. In 2023, a rate of male migration is 40%. In rural households, the other family members, particularly women, are compelled to participate in agriculture due to the circumstance. Next slide, please. I would like to share a video where Tajik women sharing their views on climate change and 
the action they're taking and how climate change affects their well-being. در بوره تغییلوبی اقلیم بیشتر و بیشتر میشنویم و نه همه اون خبرهای موسبی میباشند. سالهای آخر بسی و همی خود بوره شواد تغییر یفته است. تغییلوبی اقلیم خیلی احساس میشود. هر یک آدم میتواند سهم خود را در حفظ اقلیم بگذارد. در بوره تغییلوبی اقلیم بیشتر و بیشتر میشنویم و نه همه اون خبرهای موسبی میباشند. دیگر گونه ها همه روزه حیث کرده میشود و من رو همچون زن و مادر به کنور نگذاشته است و من همه روزه در فکر اون هستم که فرزندان من چی میخورند، چی مینوشند و این تغییلوبی به اونها چگونه تاثیر میرساند. تصمیم گرفتم در این سم قدم های خورد ولی استوار را گذارم و بسیار هم مهم یعنی در کودکستان همچون روح بر محسیت تصمیم گرفتم برای کودکان مشغولت ها شوق و برگذارنده شود. دختران توجیق نه هم وقت ایدیا و قبیلت های خود را پورا در کرده می توانند و ما از دختران توجیق آسیب پذیر ترند در این سم. از این رو خوشحال از آنم که در تغییرابی اقلیم در توجیگستان سم گذار می باشم. زمین دوست می دوریم. برای اون که ما ای زمین استفاده کلون می بریم. ما فرزندان و همه اویله همون همه ما ایلو ای زمین هم خروکه هم شکه همه چی ما تامین می شود. نه که همی سوزه های آخی بسی و همی خود بوری شواد تغییر یفته است. یک روز سوزه یک روز چی هست. بسی و هشروت کرده است همی زمین و مخواه ما حرکت کرده است و دیمتی سول با سول بیختک می ما. با پرو با چیزی های خدمو بسیوتا استفاده بریم افراد آسیب پذیر یعنی زنان و شخصانی داروی معیبیت و کودکون می بوشد از سببی که اونها معلومات نوکیشون در برای حفظ خود از آفت های طبیعی یا اینکه مطابقت برای هر گناه اقلیم اونها ندارن خوب می شد که برنامه ها یا که چوربینی ها از کارهای فرمانده دیه جاری می شد که برای اونها معلومات نوکی سطحی معلومات نوکی اونها بیشتر شود تا اینکه اونها توانند در اقلیم های گناگون خود را مطابقت کنند و از آفت های طبیعی خود را حفظ نموید فوتی پسنت او وکین ایچ تاجک من a labor migrant seeking job primarily in Russia. Climate change is compounding this family instability and social fabric disruption. The added social vulnerability, economic stress, and the health anxiety levels of climate change are taking a particular toll on Tajik women's mental and physical health and well-being, compromising their children. Uh, and uh, now I would uh, um, say and uh, present what, uh, how the USAID Healthy Mother Healthy Baby Activity and Local Health System Strengthening Project Response to Climate Change and Well-being of the Women in Tajikistan. Next slide, please. Strengthen healthcare systems is essential for addressing climate-related health challenges. This includes enhancing diseases, surveillance systems, training healthcare workers on climate-related health risks, and ensuring access to quality healthcare services. Next slide, please. Healthy mother, healthy babies seeks to transform maternal, newborn, and child health and nutrition through robust social and behavior change communication, 
It aims to create new social norms, enable joint decision making and planning among men and women so that families are empowered to adopt recommended health and nutrition practices and to respond to climate change. As HMHB SBCC strategy based on 1000 golden days supports breastfeeding and has a huge campaign to support ex exclusive breastfeeding beyond 40 days, helps re reduce re re reliance uh, on formula and the greenhouse gases released during its production and transportation. Not only is breast milk safe for both the baby and mother, but it's also environmental friendly. It can uh, be given uh, directly to the baby without any additional processing, chemical preserva preservatives, packaging, or waste. Next slide, please. Uh, HMHB focuses on the connection between climate change and health nutrition. The locally available food Social behavior change communication campaign promotes preparation and consumption of vitamin rich local foods, especially for infant complementary feeding. HMHB promotes householders uh, to grow them on their land plot or purchase them in local stores, conduct a cooking demonstration for women on preparing healthy meals for children after six months in household. Consuming fresh uh, local low mechanized food reduces embodies greenhouse gas emissions from processing, packaging, and shipment of food long distance. Next slide, please. Yes. A woman in Tajikistan are for forbidden to come to the mosque, but they HMHB is uh, partnering with religious leader to improve maternal and child health, who in turn uh, disseminate the information to the more than six, 65,000 men who go to mosque. Next slide, please. SBCC campaign aims to address issue of gender equality in the by encouraging joint decision making on health, nutrition, sanitation, and hygiene in the family. For example, jointly uh, with the National Religious Committee, HMHB developed an SBCC training package for religious leaders, imams on uh, MNCH and nutrition. The training package is based on the national communication program's first 1,000 golden days of a child's life for 20, uh, 20 till 2024, as well as Kudba on MNCH and nutrition. Next slide, please. Tajikistan's air quality index is changing, as you can see in purple above, as healthcare industry is considerable greenhouse gas contributors. Apps USAID funded local health system sustainability project completed an uh, assessment of 23 medical facilities that used incinerators without installed filters, which produced gases and ash. Findings indicate current medical waste management systems, both medical staff, mostly women, the public animals, and their environment at risk. During uh, COVID-19, a considerable increase in medical waste occurred from vaccines, surgeries, masks, etc., as innovative and sustainable solutions for medical waste management to reduce CO2 LHSS project plans to purchase a new generation of environmental friendly equipment, such as a green ideal shredders, which will contribute to the protection of med medical personnel, the public and environment in particular. Next slide, please.
Well-resourced healthcare systems are essential to protect us from health security threats, including climate change. Strong systems help prevent new cases of COVID-19 and other diseases to uh, curtail its further spread, reduce mortality rate. The project has developed as BCC comprehensive package to improve confidence in the vaccination of COVID-19 and other vital vaccines to prevent infection diseases and improve the well-being of children and women. The COVID-19 pandemic shows how and why communities need to be engaged and empowered not only to respond, but also to prevent and plan for adaptation to climate change. Next slide, please. There are several solutions that can be implemented in terms of women and climate change, including adapt and apply women's knowledge of local context, their experience and needs to identify gender sensitive impact to mitigate climate change threats and disease disasters. Promote and adv advocate benefits of breastfeeding and local available food. Encourage joint decision making by men, women, and mother in laws for mother and children on day to day health, nutrition, wash, and climate mitigation issues. Education and awareness raising. Promote health, social, economic, and climate benefits of transition to low carbon lifestyles and fund research and education programs to support behavior change and access to technology. Connect women with a clean energy technologies and tool for quality of care and climate preparedness. Thank you very much for the attention. And now I would like to present next speaker, uh, is Mrs. Jamila Baitulova, Deputy Director, Agency of for Hydrometeorology. Committee for Environmental Protection and the Government Republic of Tajikistan. Uh, she is an official speaker person and reporter for the media, government, and institution from agency. And Mrs. Jamila Baidulova is one of the first female weather forecaster in Tajikistan. Welcome, Jamila. Здравствуйте. Как уже Сурайо сказала, я представляю нашу службу Агентства по гидрометрологии Республики Таджикистан и обязанности, которые входят не только предупреждение населения о надвигающихся опасных явлениях, но и в компетенции нашей службы или задачи функции нашей службы является также предоставление шоу спектр обслуживания в таких, как мы изучаем климат, мы делаем аналитические анализы, мы проводим экспедиции, мы предоставляем различные специализированные прогностическую продукцию. Все это входит в компетенции нашей службы, и мы ежедневно этим занимаемся. Службы работают более 126 женщин. Конечно, это уже прогресс, потому что служба считается как бы, ну, приоритеты раньше думали, что в службе могут работать только женщины, но время показывает, что и женщины могут работать достаточно оперативно и могут работать как гидрологами, агрометрологами, могут прогнозировать погоду, могут изучать климат и предоставлять другие спектры услуг населению. Next slide, пожалуйста. И следующий, можно сразу следующий слайд, пожалуйста. И также наша служба, как я уже говорила, что мы очень занимаемся другими вопросами, это ледниками. Мы прекрасно все видим и знаем, что таяние ледников год за годом приводит к различным стихийным бедствиям. И в скором времени, в ближайшие 30-50 лет, центральная Азия может столкнуться с большой бедой, нехваткой воды. Многие низовья Центральной Азии уже ощущают на себя эти изменения. 
Но пока что в Республике Таджикистан в результате таяния ледников ежегодно мы наблюдаем различные стихийные вети, такие как наводнение, сели и другие прорыв высокогорных озер, которые приводят к различным ущербам. Next slide. Лиз, next slide. Next. За период 90, или можно сказать, за последние 30 лет Таджикистан и население Таджикистана на себя уже почувствовали все эти изменения. И вот 90% людей стали жертвами различных стихийных явлений. В особенности за последние 30 лет часто у нас наблюдались такие телевизии, паводки, бессоразвивающие паводки, наблюдались прорыв высокогорных озер, которые приводились к глицальным силам приводили. Также были засухи, очень достаточно аномальные засухи. Также у нас растет число дней с температурой 40 и более в летний период. Если в предыдущие десятилетия такой тем был более умеренно, но то последние 20 лет такие дни или число дней с температурой 40 и более очень часто растет, которые в свое время приводит к таянию или к заболеванию различных спички различных заболеваний среди женщин, детей и стариков. Next slide, please. А изменение климата в Таджикистане угрожает стабильности семьи и усугубляет страдания, вызванные этим изменениям, климатическим изменениям. Мы ежегодно наблюдаем и видим, что в результате вот этих, соци... результате вот этих стихийных битв люди стали более, социальные люди стали более уязвимы, они проявляются или участились в спичке вот стресса, особенно женщины, они очень беспокойны этим изменениям, потому что часто женщины в результате этих стихийных бесов, спички вот этих теплых воль, стали, их, их здоровье стало под угрозой, и и еще вот эти угрозы того, что много вот, э, страданий от этих стихийных бедствий, много женщин э, или домохозяйства стали э, как бы без домов, остались без домов в результате этих стихийных бедствий. И все это э, как бы э, усугубляет жизнь э, не только э, детей, стариков, но и женщин, потому что последние годы э, вся, бит, вся жизнь на плечах наших женщин. Next slide, please. Учитывая бит и традиции нашей республики, благополучие наших женщин зависит от мужчин. Поэтому вот эти изменения, вот эти климатические бедствия, которые участились и которых мы наблюдаем, приводят к новым явлениям, таким как миграция, климатическая миграция. И так у нас в республике вообще очень есть... И финансовая миграция – это когда много мужчин вынуждены, чтобы кормить своих домочадцев, уезжают в других странах. Но и появились также у нас климатические миграции, когда порой в результате стихийных бес или прорыв сокогонных озер, или наводнений, крупных наводнений, сели, когда уничтожается огромный, много домов, и люди вынуждены а, мигрировать в другие более безопасные места. И все эти тяжелые моменты, все приходится а, на долю наших женщин. Next slide, please. Uh. Смещение последствий и адаптации женщин Таджикистана на своевременному реагированию на изменение климата. Естественно, это очень важный момент, и все женщины, в 
том числе я и все мы, женщины нашей республики, должны уже реагировать на эти изменения и быть, если не всегда лидерами, но то хотя бы на уровне мужчин, которые решают различные моменты. И мы тоже должны включиться в этот а, а, своевременное реагирование. Повещение осведомленных женщин, девушек в области изменения климата а, и климатических рисков. Это очень важно в нынешнее время. Предоставление доступа к технологиям для своевременного оповещения женщин о погодных изменениях. Проведение а, подготовки при а, природным катастрофам в обществах, проведение информационных просветительных мероприятий по адаптации женщин, особенно беременных и девочек к изменению климата. Это очень важно, потому что а, более а, уязвимые слои населения на сегодняшний день а, в этих а, климатических а, изменениях, которые происходят, больше уязвимы девочки, женщины, дети, старики. И мы должны больше в эти части а, работать. Next slide, please. Необходимо увеличить финансирование гендерных климатических исследований, расширение накопленного опыта по мониторингу количественных и качественных сезонных изменений в сельском хозяйстве с использованием традиционных знаний и новых технологий. Представить равный доступ к совместному принятию решений в сообществе, а также равные права по продвижению по карьерной лестнице и занимать ведущие позиции. Создавать и участвовать в женских сообществах и иметь поддержку на продвижение собственных инициатив по адаптации к изменению климата. И как я уже наблюдаю за свои 30 лет работы в службе, я вижу, что наш женщин все меньше мы менее задействованы а, в проблемах изучения изменений климата. Наверное, с одной стороны, это а, наша вина, что мы не включаемся в изучение а, этих проблем. Но я думаю, что пришло время нам тоже как бы активно участвовать и а, принимать а, решения на уровне а, мужчин об этих изменениях. Next slide, please. Next, next, slide, next slide. Привлечение э, молодежи по реагированию к изменению климата – это очень важный момент, потому что все познается в тех моментах, когда мы начинаем свой путь в этот жизнь. Если мы в самых ранних, разных возрастах не будем приучать нашу молодежь, к тому, чтобы они тоже активно включались в этих э, реагированиях, в анализах, в подготовке, в э, других моментах, чтобы получить различный опыт, знания, э, в реагировании на любые стихийные бедствия. Это очень важно. Поэтому э, привычка, привычка людей – мы должны в них эту привычку о том, что заранее реагировать, иметь знания, подготовить себя. И в будущем своих детей, своих зон. Это надо все нам делать с этих возрастов. Поэтому привлечение молодежи по реагированию к изменению климата – важный момент. Для этого нужно, чтобы создавали групп, молодежных групп с участием девушек и девочек в школах, это очень важный момент, расширяя возможность всех детей и устраняя гендерные и другие формы социально-экономического неравенства. Молодые поколения станут ключевыми движущими силами формирования устойчивости к изменению климата. Проблема изменения климата – это ответственность каждого, не только людей, среднего возраста или старого возраста, или мужчин. Это ответственность всех нас, включая от детей до взрослого поколения. Next slide, please. И хочу закончить свою, свою презентацию словами, на мой взгляд, выдающегося человека, который правильно выразила словами, что... Мы не можем игнорировать мнение и знания половины населения Земли. Половина населения Земли – это более миллиарды людей, 
Это мы, женщины. И мы должны вовлекаться и вовлекаться в самых разных э, уровнях процесса борьбы с изменением климата, от климатических пригору, приговоров до практической работы по защите лесов, полей, особенно в в наиболее пострадавших от опустошительных последствий изменения климата в секторах и регионах. И в конце я хочу подытожить, сказать, что всегда нам, женщинам, мешают липкие поли и стеклянные стены. Но мы должны преодолеть все эти липкие поли, поля и все эти стены, дабы стать выше всего тех проблем, которые на сегодняшний день есть. И и стать на, на тот путь, на который мы умеем стоять и изучать, и высказать свое слово в защиту, и в защиту того, чтобы в свое время реагировать на все эти изменения и подготовить своих детей, девочек и своих, то, тоже мальчиков даже, с школ, детских садов, для того, чтобы быть готовыми ко всем этим изменениям. Спасибо большое. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Jamila. Very interesting key messages and uh, presentation. Uh, I would uh, to say that uh, we will share the recording afterward who had a problem with connection. Um, sorry. And um, next speaker, Mrs. Mohayo Arifova, gender mind mainstreaming and communication specialist, public organization, equitable development, Tajikistan. Muhayo assists uh, in promoting uh, gender equality and women's empowerment, ensuring that gender issues are fully integrated into project activities in Tajikistan. Welcome, Muhayo. Thank you, Surayo. I'm honored to represent Equitef in this important global initiative. Thank you very much for, very much for this uh, opportunity to represent our organization and share Equitef experience. Slide two, please. In June 2022, Oxfam created Equitef and spin-off organization that inherited Oxfam's uh, learning expertise and approach to development in Central Asia. Equitable development shortly, Equitef is an international public organization that provides expert development solutions and technical support to advance sustainable development and equitable growth in the region. Next slide, please. Equidef is a consulting and advisory organization that, that offers a range of, um, of services in the social economic development sector. With the support of Oxfam, Equidef is carrying forward Oxfam's legacy in Tajikistan. Equidef is, Equidef's current portfolio includes projects on public health, wash, climate change, risk reduction, and gender mainstreaming. Next slide, please. During the design of wash infrastructure, Equidef works with the Design Institute to, de, to identify possible disaster risk reduction risks that will be considered during the design of the project. We work closely with the World Health Organization to introduce water safety plan in two pilot villages, of Tajikistan, the World Health Organization tool is a risk assessment management tool that assesses, identifies, and addresses mitigate the climate change risks. Design ensures that the water point of the latrine continues to be functional and accessible for long term, even after extreme weather conditions. Recently, Equitef management team attended the SDC Cedric training, which stands for the climate, environmental, environment, and disaster risk reduction integration guidance. And we will apply the CEDRIC tool that assesses climate change related risk during the design of force infrastructure. Equidev implements a variety of solutions to mitigate climate related risks to wash systems, including assessing and altering the location or design of the water point or sanitation facility. Next slide, please. Equidev is helping hospitals to improve wastewater management system. The SDC and Lions Club International have partnered to form the setup of several devotes, decentralized wastewater management systems in five rural hospitals in Tajikistan. 
The multi-cycle funding agreement will support the construction and operation of the ward systems in these hospitals, which will help to improve sanitation and hygiene conditions and reduce the risk of waterborne diseases such as cholera and typhoid. Next slide, please. Tajik women face many challenges, including unpaid work, climate change, and water insecurity. Women are expected to care for children, the elderly, and the sick. This work is unpaid and often invisible. Women who work in more vulnerable to the impact of climate change, such as food insecurity and water scarcity. Women and girls are often responsible for collecting water in many economic communities, especially in areas where water is scarce. This can be a burden as it takes time away from other activities, such as education and work. It can also be dangerous as women and girls may have to walk long distances to collect water and may be exposed to violence or harassment. There are a number of things that can be done to help women and girls, such as providing access to improved water sources, investing in water infrastructure, and changing social norms around water collection. Also, it is necessary that the ministries of health and social protection of the population, education and science, energy and water resources will consider the needs of women when developing national strategies for interacting with the Committee on Women and Family Affairs, which will also improve the situation of women in Tajikistan's society. Next slide. A lack of adequate toilets and sanitation facilities as well as clean water to wash hands in schools makes it difficult for girls and women to manage their periods and attend school or work. This means that adolescent girls may miss school once a month or even drop out altogether. It is also a barrier for women going to work and earning an income. From walking miles to collecting drinking water to engaging in agricultural activities, women's role in the farming sector has been crucial. The primary impact of climate change on the livelihoods of people has been observed through reduced water quantity and quality, which affect agriculture and health through the rise of waterborne diseases, as well as uh, increased frequency and severity of disasters, landslides, floods, and droughts. Equidef is committed to supporting women farmers in Tajikistan by helping them to access land, means of production, and markets. Equidef will also provide women farmers with training on agro and irrigation technicals and will, be, will help them to implement drip irrigation systems. This will help to improve the livelihoods of women farmers and their families. It will also help to improve nutrition in Tajikistan. Women and girls around the world spend an estimated 200 million hours every day collecting water. This is a huge burden that takes away from their time for learning, earning an income, resting, and spending time with family. In Tajikistan, women and girls often spend hours a day collecting water from rivers and other water resources. This time could be better spent on other activities. There are a number of solutions that can be implemented to reduce the burden of water collection, such as building water pipelines, providing access to water tanks or wells, and educating women and girls about the importance of education and income generation. Detecting gaps and opportunities in women inclusive governance is an integral factor in achieving sustainable development goal five on gender equality, as well as SDG six on clean water and sanitation. Equity urges women's full and effective participation in equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision-making when it comes to water management. Women and girls are the primary providers, managers and users of water However, women are much underrepresented in decision-making platforms. Women's involvement in the management of water resources and water infrastructure improves efficiency and effectiveness, enhances output, and improves sustainability. Next slide, please. To manage the risks, Equidef takes the following steps. Equidef conduct, conducts risk assessment and implements risk management plans to ensure the safety of wash schemes and sanitation facilities. We also conduct focus groups with vulnerable people, women and girls to explore their needs and suggestions. Equidef constructs gender-friendly water schemes and sanitation facilities, 
ensures the participation of women in project implementation and establish water users uh, committees and health committees with 50% of women. Also involve active women in high level national workshops to raise their voices among decision makers. Gender. Uh, Equidef prioritizes gender equality and the empowerment of women in all its work. The project ensures that women have full access to safe sanitation and hygiene services, and that their voices are heard in the design and implementation of the project. Next slide, please. Oxfam Equidef established women's committees to represent the needs of women in villages. Women were involved in the meetings and rallies to ensure their voices were heard. For example, Malika from the village of Negnot was actively involved in the construction of the water systems and was subsequently elected the chairman of the water user committee. The established water user committees included the community advisors of war, which attracted women to conduct surveys among the population to identify their needs. Malika, a 48-year-old Tajik woman, is a housewife with uh, five, ch five children. Her husband lost his job when the two sons went to work in another country. The family relied on remittances from their sons. Malika had to buy clean water in vessels, which was expensive. Sometimes the family had to use river water that made the children sick. Neknot village is located on the outskirts of a Rocky Mountain, so it was so to be too difficult and expensive to provide the village with a safe water system. However, Oxfam decided to help the village build a water system. The community supported the construction by providing manual labor. Malika was involved in the construction of the water system. She learned that she could speak up and be heard. And that this helped to increase respect for women in the community. She is now the chairman of the village water user committee. Malika's story shows that women can play a vital role in improving water security in their communities. By speaking up and getting involved, they can help to ensure that everyone has access to safe water. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm now, now open to any question you may have. Thank you very much, Muhayo. Uh, and next speaker uh, will Mrs. Dibunisomo Minzoda, Country Director in Tajikistan, the Regional Environmental Center for Central Asia, shortly current. She leads and she is uh, responsible for the CEO portfolio in Tajikistan, supports the government of Tajikistan on environmental, water, agricultural cooperation and the regional level with the countries of Central Asia to strengthen intersectoral cooperation through information exchange and knowledge management. Welcome, Zibuniso. Hello, uh, greetings to everyone. Thank you, Surayo. I am delighted to be here uh, as a panelist. Um, as Surayo already um, uh, uh, told everyone that uh, I'm representing here Karek, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about um, Karek. So uh, Karek is a regional environmental center for Central Asia, and it was established in 2001 with the support uh, of uh, five um, uh, Central Asian countries, uh, a minister of uh, environments of uh, Central Asian countries, uh, and with support of, of course, our main uh, part, uh, partners, uh, European Union and the UNDP. Uh, so more than 20 years, yeah, CARIC supports the governments of Central Asia to assist uh, to in addressing uh, climate change um, uh, issues. Um, uh, CAREC provides the platform for the interstate and the multi-sectorial uh, dialogue, allowing introduction of cutting-edge uh, know-how, knowledge, and technologies in the region. 
Uh, this in turn promotes the deployment and application of in innovative uh, environmental policies, approaches and techniques and involvement of the uh, public in uh, environmental uh, decision making and improvement of information exchange on the regional uh, level. Um, Already all the panelists, uh, they uh, um, told you about uh, how uh, women uh, in Tajikistan especially is suffering from the climate change and how they are vulnerable uh, and what um, CAREX activity to support women's well-being. Uh, so the Regional Environmental Center for Central Asia is actively working to address climate change and support women's well-being in Tajikistan. Uh, some specific actions uh, and, and initiatives include um, uh, it's uh, capacity building uh, and trainings. Uh, we conduct uh, a lot of workshop uh, trainings program on climate change adaptation, uh, mitigation, and sustainable uh, development, specifically targeted at the women's groups, uh, government officials, and local stakeholders. This helps to broaden the knowledge base of participants, um, uh, empower the women uh, to take a, an active role in climate action. Uh, I will bring you example, the uh, CAREC is mentoring the Women in Water Diplomacy ne Network for Central Asia and Afghanistan. It's a platform aimed at um, promoting gender sensitive uh, water governance and um, management in the region and uh, providing also uh, a network to enhance the capacity and skills in water diplomacy and negotiations. Uh, unfortunately, what we are, uh, the challenges we are facing uh, that um, uh, it's really difficult to um, find women uh, in the, uh, for example, in Tajikistan, who is uh, at the decision making uh, uh, position like uh, if we for example we we don't have in the our uh, network the government representative uh, representative from uh, ministry of uh, um, water and energy resources of Tajikistan because in entire department in the ministry uh, in the entire department for water resources, there is no woman uh, who is working, who could join this network, for example. Uh, this is the uh, one of the challenges that um, uh, we are facing when we are working with the government, that the woman really uh, underrepresented, it, uh, underrepresented at the uh, policy level. Um, uh, CAREC also imp implements various projects aimed at uh, enhancing adaptation and uh, resilience to climate change in Tajikistan with a particular focus on vulnerable com uh, communities. Uh, these uh, projects consider the unique challenges faced by women and focus on providing support to reduce their vulnerability on climate hazards. As an example, uh, within the, we have the big project, uh, which is funded by the World Bank. It's called the Climate Adaptation and Mitigation Program for the RLC Basin. Um, uh, since CAREC implementing this project since 2016, um, and, uh, and we provide the support um, for a process of developing methods, approaches, tools for decision-making uh, support and knowledge products on climate change in Central Asia. Uh, women, food and climate change in Central Asia at the household level in Central Asia, women 
um, uh, mostly they um, they make the uh, food related decisions and uh, they choices about what to eat how to prepare it can make a difference in the households and communities uh, responses to the challenges um, posed by climate change uh, Women, Food and Climate Change in Central Asia uh, celebrates the women of Central Asia, uh, targets the ranges of uh, choices they make to contribute to a reduction of their personal household community and national climate change emissions uh, show how their food choices can affect the environment and um, offer um, alternative um, for the consideration. Um, the, we also actively um, uh, support the government of uh, Central, Asian, uh, Central Asia countries to prepare for the um, uh, big uh, conference, the UNFCCC conference on climate change. And then the, what we see in our experience that again, the woman is really underrepresented uh, in the delegations of the countries, or also women is really underrepresented. And uh, um, we, we are trying to uh, have more women who are, uh, who are at the decision-making uh, positions, who can bring the change, and then also their voice can be heard. Um, and last year, uh, we did organize the Tajikistan Pavilion at the COP27, and we organized more than 20 um, side events and uh, one of side events was on the women uh, in water diplomacy, and then another uh, side event was um, uh, use of Central Asia, where we had the uh, women um, speakers. So we were able to support them to be at the COP, uh, uh, and then uh, also raise their voice. Um, so we, the CAREC only, uh, not only works at the uh, policy level, we also work at the local uh, level, and then we uh, uh, work with non-governmental organizations to present small exhibitions and to conduct workshops to raise awareness of the available climate adaptation and mitigation technologies and how to get financing for improvement uh, projects. Uh, and for example, COMFOSB uh, project works in Tajikistan and Uzbekistan with banks and microfinance organization to provide loans for climate friendly and climate resilient food uh, production and storage in response to limited income generating opportunities in cold uh, months and weather related losses and damages to agriculture and uh, and come for SP project supported rural communities and farmers in Uzbekistan's Zerafshan Valley and lower Amudaria Basin in establishing so sophisticated greenhouses that um, that now employ about 300 women in the production of vegetables for domestic consumptions, sales, um, and export. Um, similar activities across Tajikistan improve the nutritional status or uh, status of women and children and families are able to produce surplus vegetables that they can sell. Other Tajik farmers are also improving uh, feedstock, water supply conditions for animals, and installing uh, compost generation units that help produce fertilizers and reduce emissions. Um, yes, the, that was what um, I wanted to um, 
to say today um, about the CARX activities. If you have any questions, um, I'm ready to answer your questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Zibuniso. Uh, and next speaker, Amanda Quantana, Climate and Health Technical Specialist, APT Associates. She is a global environmental health professional with over seven years of experience in international health and development, program management, and implementation. Amanda, welcome. Thank you, Sirayu. I hope you all can hear me well. Um, as Sirayu mentioned, I've been working in the field of climate and health for some time now, and I'm really happy to be with APT Associates working on their climate and health strategy and also integrating climate into our health programs. So as many of you likely heard from the intersection of gender and climate session at yesterday's Pathfinder session, there were likely a lot of information on gender and climate covered. However, I just wanted to provide some additional background as to why we need to think about health and well-being of women in a changing climate before diving into some global policy in this area. So firstly, action on climate and health addresses the disproportionate impacts on the health of women and girls acknowledged by the Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. People who are already most vulnerable and marginalized, especially in low middle income countries like Tajikistan, are disproportionately affected by climate change and in the greatest need of adaptation strategies. Around the world, women have less access than men to resources such as land, credit, agricultural inputs, decision-making structures, technologies, and training. And these um, access would enhance their capacity to adapt to climate change, making them more vulnerable than men to the impacts of climate change. There are also a high percentage of women living in poor communities that are dependent on local natural resources for their livelihoods, particularly in rural areas where the majority of women have responsibilities for the household to supply water and energy for cooking and heating. Pregnant women and fetuses are particularly vulnerable to increased heat that also exacerbates poor air quality. These uh, impacts of increased heat can lead to preterm birth stillbirth, low birth weight, uterine contractions, dehydration, fetal heart rate, tachycardia, and congenital heart defects. Health considerations cut across both economic and non-economic loss and damage. And specifically, there are health losses and damage, such as increased burden of disease, deaths, gender-based violence, and damage to healthcare capacity and infrastructure. Therefore, ensuring there are comprehensive health services is very critical for gender equality as sexual reproductive health and rights and bodily autonomy are foundations for achieving gender equality and empowering women and girls. So to the policy, although vulnerable, women can and are active and effective agents and promoters of adaptation and mitigation to climate change. They have deep understanding of local knowledge, leadership and skills related to sustainable practices resource management, water harvesting and storage to enhance local adaptive capacity and sustain a community's livelihood. We heard a few examples from the earlier panelists in this session, so I hope that was giving some tangible evidence um, in Tajikistan context. Recommendations have been made for adaptation initiatives to identify and address gender specific impacts of climate change, taking women specific circumstances into account and for women's priorities and needs to be reflected in the development planning and funding. The parties of the UNFCCC have recognized the importance of involving women and men equally in UNFCCC processes, and they have developed and implemented national climate policies that are gender responsive. And I put the air quotes because there are some limitations that I will dive into. This was done um, in the UNFCCC processes through a dedicated agenda item under the convention that addresses issues of gender and climate change by including overarching text in the Paris Agreement. In 2012, country governments meeting under the UNFCCC adopted a goal of gender balance in national delegations and in national climate policy. 
And since 2012, the UN Climate Change Secretariat has reported annually on the gender composition of national delegations and policy and decision-making bodies under the UNFCCC and Paris Agreement. And we heard from an earlier speaker that this was something that they're working on to promote the equity and in, um, in gender in these decision-making bodies at the global level. So the Gender Action Plan agreed by governments under the UNFCCC calls for women's full, equal, and meaningful participation in the international climate process and to ensure a prominent role for women in decision-making and climate action. Many countries have shared how they are integrating gender across different priority sectors within their national climate action plan, such as the National Determined Contributions or NDCs and National Adaptation Plans. Some studies have found that many country policies mainstream gender equity commitments in the climate context with recognizing specific groups as vulnerable and marginalized. However, the extent to which gender is mainstreamed needs to include a rights-based framing and commitments must also be institutionalized and coherent across policies, especially across sector policies. So this is where the gender responsive programming um, can be better so that we can actually implement commitments made to gender responsive programming and policies. Finally, ensuring financial finance flows to the local level, including local grassroots groups and women's rights organizations, helps to promote rights-based approaches to health advocacy and services, improving women's um, health and um, improving their, their ability to adapt to climate change. Thanks very much. And if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat. Thank you, Amanda. And yeah, that uh, uh, I would um, to ask that maybe some yeah, intervention successful from our speakers experience and um, Maybe Muhayo, what kind of the intervention successful? What was unique about it, their approach, or uh, where there were pain points? Uh, if you um, can share with us with successful yeah. stories. Thank you, Surayoza, for, for your question. Yeah, we have very good uh, example. Um, you know that sanitation is a serious problem, especially in the 14 H fields. Many schools in Tajikistan have uh, very basic toilets and no wash basins still. The lack of safe water, proper toilets, menstrual periods, uh, menstrual hygiene and, and privacy often discourage uh, adolescent girls from attending the schools. Equidev constructed um, of gender friendly latrines in five schools. Uh, so far, and uh, five health facilities in uh, rural districts. It changed school girls' uh, life for better, and now mm, around 20,000 school girls in those districts can use those comfortable restrooms while they are um, studying in the school, and adolescent girls in these schools have no problem to attend school uh, in menstruation periods, and they have now privacy to use. Uh, school toilets. Thank you. Thank you, Muhayo. Um, yes, we. It's actually um, we had uh, we have a lot of question and. Uh, the time for this panel session is running out and thank you dear speakers and participants of the panel discussion and i would like to uh, summarize the recommendations that uh, were made during this session and uh, to address this intersection of women climate change and well-being we need um, robust policies and program that promote gender equality women's empowerment and climate uh, resilience. Uh, this includes access to education, financial resources, and healthcare, as well as supporting a woman's leadership and participation in climate-related sectors. By investing in women's uh, rights and supporting their active involvement, 
uh, we can create a more equitable and sustainable future for all. And uh, we have um, a question in the chat. Um, and the first question, um, yeah. Any specific action for women uh, with disabilities as they are more vulnerable and exposed to such challenges uh, indeed. And uh, all action we have to take uh, their need into consideration, need to align all policies according to the international acts which support uh, PWDC. And um, for example, uh, to um, include them and uh, designing, implementing, and monitoring the activities. Um, And uh, government of Tajikistan is raising the problem of disabled people and specifically women to help them better access. And um, you say it has recently awarded funds for a new climate change and disability activity. This should be helping support on the policy as well as community level. Um, And the uh, next question uh, also. Any action to address women's uh, not as a representation in decision-making table, table, how to ensure women's needs are taken into account in the decision-making, both contact and process with climate change intervention. Uh, Government of Tajikistan during the last five years actively promoting women to be leaders. Uh, a lot of women became an, a minister and leads. And they are you know, very much promoted to be a decision makers. The family union uh, is very much uh, promoted among Tajikistan recently, as you know, men are in migration. And uh, it, those women are usually also ahead of the family. And um, also um, um, women, um, so uh, our women are decision makers. Uh, it, it's, um, yes, it's very uh, big problem now, but uh, our woman at, um, um, it's, it's a, uh, a decision makers too in, and, um, in Tajikistan. And we can um, ask also Jamila, uh, she's is very, uh, uh, high leader uh, in agency in Tajikistan also. And uh, maybe Jamila can share with her experience and maybe uh, can ask uh, on this question um, deeply. Сураю, я прошу прощения, вы не можете повторить вопрос? Что-то я не расслышала вопрос. Я говорю, что сейчас секунду. Значит, вопрос говорилось, что I'm sorry, I'm switching Russian. Какие-либо действия по решению проблемы отсутствия представительства женщин в процессе принятия решений. Как вот э, можно обеспечить учет потребностей женщин при принятии решений, да? вот, вот как, так и в процессе мероприятия по изменению климата? Как, какой успешный опыт? Почему? Э, что у нас женщины, они э, достаточно стали активно тоже участвовать в принятии решений. Есть ли у вас какой-то пример? 
В принципе, для принятия решений, да, вот мой пример, допустим, 30 лет работы в службе, и меня признали как эксперта, и последний год я очень активно вовлечена во всех этих различных обсуждений вопросов климата, так как у меня еще опыт работы преподавания в университете, я параллельно преподавала, поэтому мы еще молодежь вовлекаем в этих, готовим из них лидеров, лидеров, особенно из девушек, студентов, чтобы они не были пассивны в решениях различных климатических вопросов, чтобы они активно вовлекались в это. И поэтому я сама лично вот 20 последних лет очень сильно занимаюсь этими вопросами, готовлю студентов, готовлю новое поколение. Вот. В принципе, поэтому активность – это очень важно на сегодняшний момент, потому что все преграды можно преодолеть при желании, что если мы сами заинтересованы и доказываем своим примером, своим знанием эти возможности. Главное быть готовым и показать на деле. Если ты имеешь достаточно знаний и ты готов принять, вовлечься в принятие решения, я считаю, что это очень правильно. Надо действовать. Спасибо большое. Очень хороший опыт. Thank you very much, Jamila. It's good the experience that you're sharing. And uh, the next question uh, to Angel Equidev, uh, to Muhayo. Uh, Muhayo, please say, it's, uh, for the first uh, what are the uh, good practices or lessons learned regarding partnership or different stakeholder with local uh, government or funded fund, please? Thank you, Surayo, for your question. Um, I can say that um, uh, Foster, uh, you you asked uh, about challenges that was in, encountered and how it was resolved. You mean your question was? Can you please repeat your question? Sorry. Yeah, this is a question from Chad and. Um, What are the good practices or lessons learned regarding partnership of uh, different stakeholders? Can we partnership yeah. with local uh, government? I know that you have a strong uh, uh, yeah, cooperation a with partnership with government. Yeah, Equidev develops each project based on relevancy, effectiveness, and sustainability. That in Its own way becomes uh, people-centric. Equidev uses a program management manual that uh, refers to the process of applying skills, knowledge, and tools to identify requirements, uh, address needs, incorporate the concerns of stakeholders and balance of completing demands uh, of time, cost, and scope of achieve incremental benefits through the integrated management of multiple projects. Instead, it's all, it's all about understanding how to manage a project and uh, anticipating potential uh, roadblocks effectively. Based on this manual, Equidev's uh, competent and committed and team carefully works on um, diligent planning, clearly set uh, and prioritizes project goals and monitors and controls uh, any possible challenges and change through community feedback mechanisms. And I can say that, um, for example, uh, when Equidev uh, plan to design, to construct any uh, sanitation uh, facilities, uh, Equidev works uh, before with government structures Uh, with institute, design institute to design the facilities to plan how to plan where we can um, construct these or those uh, facilities, sanitation facilities, uh, taking into account um, climate change um, issues and uh, uh, disaster risk reductions like floods, like droughts, not droughts, but um, landslides, yeah. 
if it, it's um, in the mountain uh, areas. Yeah, we have such experience with proposal with governments in Tajikistan. This committee, committee of Human and Family Affairs will work with ministries of health and public. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Mohayor. And uh, the um, next question to uh, directly Zibuniso. Zibuniso mentioned about the water sector having entirely no representation of women. Is this a structural? Uh, structural problem implying uh, the government political structure does not allow women uh, in those position or is it that women are not uh, qualified intellectually to take the role thank you zibuniso um yes maybe i need to clarify it's not like in all central asian countries they are not uh, kind of represented it. Uh, right now at the Ministry uh, of uh, Water Resources in Tajikistan, um, there is no woman in the uh, Department of Water Resources because uh, they have this high turnover. And then when we ask the government, like why you don't have any woman, uh, like female worker, because we, we really want them to be part of our network. Uh, um and we we want to do this capacity building for the government representative so they can be more active uh, and uh, at the um policy level uh but uh, there is many reasons why the woman is not working at, at the government it's also um, one of reason that uh, when they get married uh, they quit the job um and then because they they have a lot of other burden on the woman as they they get married they have to take care of family they have to take care of their children um sometimes uh um, not even sometimes but majority cases the husband is against uh, that the woman should work especially at the government uh, they don't like when the woman work with other men and uh, especially in Tajikistan the government sector is more more, more dominated by uh, men I mean it's not only in Tajikistan in the whole uh, entire region it's like that and then um, we can even see this kind of tendency that um, uh, really women is not represented well at the highest uh, global level as we see at the COP, uh, for example, conference of parties uh, last year. Yes, if you see the picture of the world leaders and there is only two, three women and then 120 uh, presidents, all men. So there is many, many uh, reasons for that. Um, and then, of course, the low salary. Um, yeah, unfortunately, now uh, this is the situation. But we do encourage women to be uh, working at the government. And then we do provide a lot of uh, capacity building trainings for them. Thank you, Ziboniso. Thank you. I'm looking at some uh, question. I think uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, some question. Um, maybe to uh, also uh, to Zibuniso. Um, you mentioned the challenges is uh, that there are no women's representative in Department of Nature Resources. 
Uh, what action are they taking to address this gap, especially ensuring women's representation among decision makers? Um, can you ask, Zivoniso? Uh, it's directly to you. <laughs> Uh, yes, I mentioned about the uh, Ministry of uh, Water Resources in Tajikistan. It's not the entire ministry, but it's the specific department, uh, the uh, Water Resources Department. Since I mentioned about that we have the network, Women in Water Diplomacy Network in Central Asia and Afghanistan. Um, uh, and then in this network, we we do have from, for example, other countries from the ministry's uh, representatives. But right now from Tajikistan, there is no one because they don't have anyone working at the ministry right now. But in Tajikistan, at the Committee for Environmental Protection uh, under the government of Tajikistan, there is a, um, a woman uh, like deputy chairman of uh, committee for environmental protection is woman and right now we have here Jamila Baidulaeva she is the deputy uh, director of agency uh, for hydrometeorology um, of the committee for environmental protection um, at the committee for environmental protection actually there is a woman uh, like who are leading this um, policy yeah uh, but yeah since we are uh, not only working with one ministry we work with different ministries because the climate change uh, uh, should uh, be addressed not only by one uh, committee for environmental protection yeah ministry of environment because the climate change is um, affects everyone and yeah so Thank that's you. why Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, um, as I mentioned before, the time for this panel session is running out. And I would like um, to say thank you very much to um, you know, for listening to us. And uh, uh, we will uh, address the question via email. And Tajikistan team is so proud to be presenting during the first day. And using this opportunity, I would like to thank all our speakers, all women decision makers uh, for their time and presentation. Thank you.